Welcome back to In The Midst. Today, I'm going to hopefully try to share some communication tips. Within marriage, it's in inevitable. We are going to have communication problems at some point, but it's also vital to know how to address those, to work through those, to avoid those as much as we can, and keep those lines of communication open between you and your spouse. So, we know that communication is, it's really a universal problem. It doesn't matter if it's a husband and wife, if it's your children, if it's between, you know, you and your parents or a friend. At some point, there's going to be communication problems. And we have to address those. This is not one of those things that if we leave it alone, then it's just going to kind of work itself out. Communication problems don't do that. They get worse. So... Let's look at those today. Um, when you think of this in the context of your marriage, this person, your spouse, is the one person you vowed to spend the rest of your life with. You chose them. You don't get to choose your parents. You don't get to choose your kids. You choose your spouse. That's a pretty big deal, and God puts a very high value on marriage. So why are we not talking to the one person that we chose, the one person we vowed to spend our lives with? Maybe you are talking, but it's not effective. It's not um, pleasant. Maybe you've tried to have these conversations with your spouse and they've reacted harshly to you. Maybe they belittled your wants and your the things that you tried to convey. Um, maybe something was bothering you and they belittled that and said, it's really not a big deal. You're overreacting, you know, whatever it is. There's Maybe there's been something like that that's built a wall that's caused you to not want to go talk to your spouse. If that's happened, this is even more reason that this is important. This Use those barriers as a reason to remind you why you have to work through your communication and that you are responsible for your own words and actions. So be aware of those. You know, think about how your spouse reacted to you if they reacted to you wrong um, and how you were hurt and how you're upset and how that bothered you and use that not to react that way to them. You know, you shouldn't be seeking to intentionally cause hurt and anger and frustration and distrust and all those things in your spouse. So remember not to speak to your spouse that way on purpose. We should be using Bible for um, our guidelines. So that's what we're going to look at. Um, let's see. I don't want you to think that I'm overlooking or excusing or justifying any sort of belittling or arguing or anything like that. I'm not. We just have to work through those. Work to keep your words and tone pleasing to the Lord, regardless of how your spouse has reacted to you. This is not easy. It's not. Your flesh will want to react harshly. Maybe your flesh wants to react instead of act. However, you are always, always, always responsible for your own words and reactions every time. You can never take those words and reactions back. Get in the Bible. Look up and memorize scripture regarding your words. God has a lot to say about our speech. Memorizing scripture is a great tool that we must learn to use. This is going to keep those verses in our mind. So in that moment, um, you know, when we're trying to figure out what to say and our flesh is giving us a thousand things to say that are sarcastic and snarky and hurtful, God's word is there. Just go, nope. The Holy Spirit's going to say, nope. And he's going to bring these verses back to your mind. This takes lots of work. It's not natural. It's not natural to memorize scripture. It's not natural to say no to the flesh and say yes to the Holy Spirit and keep your mouth shut or react calmly and kindly and collectively. Um, this is something we're going to have to work at. But it's possible and it's so important to the overall condition and the lifespan of your marriage. This is also going to take prayer. We have to be in prayer for our marriages, for our words. So 
if you know that your words, that your reactions are something you struggle with, if you want to react harshly, you want to react in anger, um, take this to the Lord. This is something that you have to be praying about, praying for his help with. Um, let's just jump to some verses. I want to throw these out there. Um, some of them I'll read, some of them I won't. So if you want to write down the references and go read them, highlight them, you know, write them down, commit them to memory. God's given us his word to use, to help us. It's not just, you know, a book full of things that aren't um, relatable and um, applicable to our lives. It is. So I'm going to start. Job 27, 4 says, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Psalm 34, 13, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Psalm 141, 3 is probably one of my favorites. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and, and, preserve, and perverse lips put far from thee. Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So, God showed me something with this verse a few years ago. When someone's yelling at you and they're speaking harshly and rudely and all these things to you, you're, you're more likely to get upset because you are reacting to what you're hearing. But, if you begin to get flustered and get loud and you know your heart rate gets up and you're getting aggravated you're getting more emotional and intense if you don't keep yourself calm then you're not going to turn that wrath away the louder most of us get the more upset we get the rest of our emotions tend to follow our words it follows our tone so be sure to keep those things in check while you're talking, if you can keep yourself calm, if you can keep your voice down and level, you're most likely not going to get as worked up if, as you would if you were to be yelling. Colossians 4, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that, me, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So communication can be hard and even unpleasant. We're not perfect. But this should not be the general condition of our conversations. It should not be that when your spouse walks in the door, you're like, oh, now I have to talk to you. Or your spouse calls and you look at the phone and you're like, I don't want to talk to you. You know, that should not be the overall tone of your marriage. That is a huge red flag. These are That's a sign that things need to be worked through. All too often we see and hear from others that, you know, other people say they feel like roommates. Maybe you do too. And that's not what God intends. This is a husband and wife relationship that is to be unique. It is to be set apart. This is different than what you have with anyone else. This is special. A um, couple things to keep in mind that we forget, I guess. Um, your spouse is not a mind reader. They're not. God did not give you or your husband that ability, so stop expecting it from each other. Um, you know, you can't be vague and you can't be passive and then get mad at your husband for not picking up on those cues. They're not like that. God did not make them that way. So stop expecting more from them than what they are capable of. Um, they don't pick up on those subtle hints they just don't and remember that your body language speaks so much louder than your words do you can be saying something but if you're not looking at him if you are you know you've got your arms crossed or you're looking down at your phone or whatever um and you just don't look interested in the conversation if you look annoyed um they see that they read body language so, if your body language doesn't say, I'm interested in what you have to say, um, I'm communicating with you, I'm listening, I'm present in this conversation, then they're going to notice that. And the more we mentally check out of those conversations, the less they're going to talk to us. You know, a lot of women, it's very common that um, ladies will complain and say, you know, he doesn't listen to me, he doesn't talk to me. Let's make sure we're not doing things to foster that environment to foster that attitude in our husbands. Um, 
not every topic is enjoyable. Not every topic's easy. There's going to be things that you have to address. There's going to be sin. There's going to be misunderstandings. There's going to be, you know, tempers are going to flare. Our flesh is going to get its way. But this does not mean to avoid those hard conversations. They need to be had. Um, avoiding our problems will not make them go away. So I want to challenge you to have these conversations. And I'm going to give you some tips here in a second to help you have those conversations, just some things to remember. Um, the moment that that problem arises, the moment that, that you want to talk about that hard thing doesn't always mean that's the right moment to have that conversation. So um, three things to help you get started with those conversations. Honesty, kindness, and timing. Be honest. If your husband brings something to you that he's not sure of something that doesn't look good there's a conversation between you and someone else there's a relationship a friendship and he's like hey i just want to know what's going on maybe it's not even someone of the opposite sex maybe it's a friend it's a girlfriend that you have that he's seeing changes and he's seeing how that that um friendship is affecting you be honest with him you know you want him to be honest with you so return that and you know god expects honesty god hates lying so remember to be honest no matter how hard it is you know we teach our kids that from a young age that you know you're going to be in more trouble if you lie to me your marriage is going to have a lot more trouble if you're lying um your sin will find you out your spouse will figure it out um just don't proverbs 6 16 through 19 says these six things these six things doth the lord hate yea seven are an abomination to him a proud look a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devised wicked imag imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, lies as mentioned twice, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. A lot of times discord is gossip, and there's a lot of untruth in that. So he's definitely mentioned lying twice here, and possibly that could be tied to discord in the third time. So in three verses, God has said twice that he hates lying. This is a big deal, and we should put emphasis on the things that God puts emphasis on. Um, Proverbs 8, 7, For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. May that be the theme of our conversations. I would say that God is serious about our honesty. Say what you mean, and mean what you say. Do not throw out threats as a scare tactic to your spouse. They, it's not going to work. That is going to bring so much more than you ever bargained for. Um, if you are throwing out threats, if you are saying, you know, I'm going to leave or I'm going to divorce you or I'm going to blah, 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 whatever, fill in the blank and you don't, you're not following through on your words. So now you're a liar. And what else are you doing? Are you saying you're going to do that? You're not. So that's breaking that trust. This is going to bring huge division in your marriage. So always choose honesty, even when you know that you've done or said something that's going to upset your spouse, just be honest and work through it. You know, you're going to be forgiven a lot faster if you're just honest than if you're lying through things. Cause now you've got a lie to cover up the lie to cover up the lie. You know, we don't want our children doing that to us. We shouldn't be doing that with the Lord. Um, he already sees, he already knows. So you don't want to have to go get that right with God and then go back to your spouse and you've got to rehash this twice. So just be honest. Part of being honest is something that um, there's a small part of this that us women have a hard time with and we don't even realize it. No one has told us that this is lying and this is a problem. When you're upset, maybe you don't feel good, something's bothering you, um, whatever. So that's just off, right? And your husband notices the words that he says, what's wrong? And we say, nothing. Come on. He knows. He knows there's something. If there wasn't something, you wouldn't be acting this way. You wouldn't be slamming doors and you wouldn't be huffing and puffing through the house. You wouldn't be short. You wouldn't be giving him the cold shoulder. You wouldn't be angry. Stop saying nothing. You are lying to him. This is a big deal. Um, I understand 
there's times that we don't know. You wake up and you're just off. You had a phone conversation and now you're just off. There wasn't necessarily bad news. There wasn't necessarily anything wrong. Um, you know, ant flow comes once a month and our hormones are off for a few days, week or two, whatever. Um, and we don't know why we feel the way we do. We just know something's wrong and we don't like it and there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing our spouse can do about it. So I want to challenge you to say, I don't know. If you don't know what it is, just say that. Don't lie to them. Husbands are like PIs, okay? They are going to private investigate and figure out what is wrong with you. They're going to keep asking. They're going to ask questions. They're going to be like, well, is it something I did? Did you talk to somebody? Did you have a bad conversation? Did someone, was someone mean to you? And they're going to like try to get to the bottom of this because they are problem solvers. Okay, you married Mr. Fix-It. Mr. Fix-It likes to fix it. And that's great and that's wonderful. And there's times that we need Mr. Fix-It. However, if you don't know what's wrong, you're just off, then just say that. Just tell them, I don't know, it's just an off day, it's that time of the month, and I'm just kind of like, eh, today. Just tell him, and he's going to go, oh, okay, do you need anything? And he's going to leave it alone, which is what we want. We don't feel good, we don't, we got a headache, whatever, we don't want you asking us a thousand questions. So be honest with him, and he's going to be like, oh, okay. Nothing you can do. Nothing I can do. You need anything? No, you're good. Okay, I'm going to go watch TV. Let me know if you need something. And we're like, oh, praise the Lord. Leave me alone. Okay, that's how you get that. Don't lie to him and say, I don't know if you know. Okay, don't say nothing. It is something. Okay, um, articulate those things to him. If you don't want to talk about it, just say, I don't want to talk about it. Say, I had a bad day. Had a bad phone call. I don't want to talk about it right now. He'll at least know it's not him. That's the biggest thing that they want to know is it's not them. Did I do something to make you mad? Did I do something to upset you, to hurt you? And then let's proceed to fix it. That's what's going through your husband's mind. When I was pregnant with our first, I would be fine. I'd be on the couch, watch TV, eat a snack, dinner, whatever. I'd get up and go to the restroom and I wouldn't come back. Somewhere between getting up, coming back, my hormones just bloop, enraged, and I would just start bawling, and I'd go sit on our bed in our bedroom, and I'd just cry because I was pregnant, and no one tells you these things. No one told, told me that that was going to happen, so I'm sitting there crying, and finally, it's like 10, 15 minutes, and he starts wondering, like, where did she go? So, he gets up to come find me, and I'm sitting in the bedroom crying, and he's like, are you Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Why are you crying? I don't know. Did I do something? He would say. And I said, no. Did I not do something? Is that something you want me to do? And I said, no, I don't think so. And he's like, then why are you crying? I don't know. And he's like, okay. Like, he didn't really know what to do with it, but it was more than me just saying, I'm fine. You're crying. You're not fine. And after like the second or third time, I was like, it's just my hormones. Like, I'm just pregnant. Sorry. Um, and he was like, okay. Like, he could work with that. That's all they want. They just want to know if it's their fault. Is there something that they're supposed to do to make it better? Um, so, just be honest. Um, if you are a husband and you are listening to this or you're overhearing your wife listen to it, we love you. We're thankful you want to fix it, but sometimes we just want you to listen. There's not always a fix-it solution. Um, it's just not. We are glad that you're willing to help present a solution. We are glad that you are there trying to formulate a plan, but sometimes we just want to vent. A lot of the times we can figure it out ourselves if it's a problem, you know, with our mom or our best friend or, you know, a sibling, whatever. Um, if we want to know, hey, what do you think I should do? We will ask, but just listen. Um, sometimes if we can just talk out loud, we'll feel better. It's really all we want. Um, so there's my two cents on that. Ladies, remember to give your husband the same courtesy. There will be days that he just needs to talk about his day at work. You didn't do anything. He sounds angry a little bit. He was frustrated. His voice is getting a little elevated while he's talking to you. He's not yelling at you. He's just talking. Just listen. 
Um, they have bad days too. They are presented with a lot of things at work, stress, whatever. Just let them talk. Um, omission is lying. If your husband says, where were you? What'd you do? Where'd you go? Who were you with? How long were you gone? What are you going to do today? Whatever. Um, what are you looking at on your phone? Don't say nothing. If it was nothing, you wouldn't do it. Where are you going today? Nowhere. And you went to five places. Like, what do you mean nowhere? Nowhere important? Nowhere that he needs to know about? Nowhere that he wants to know about? Nowhere he would care to go? But be honest, okay? When you're looking at your phone, he's like, what are you doing? Scrolling Instagram. Sorry, I'll put it down. You know, it's that nothing. And they're going, if it wasn't nothing, you wouldn't be sitting there for the last 10 minutes looking at your phone. What are you doing? And they're going to be skeptical. And that's going to breed distrust. We should not be hiding things from our spouse. Right now, in this time of year, Christmas is coming. And so my husband's like, what's in the box? Presents. And he's like, okay. I'm not going to tell you what your Christmas present is, but it's presents. And he's, that's enough. We're looking out on your phone. Sell papers. Check my email. I got discount coupons or, you know, everybody's having a sale today. It's Veterans Day, you know, whatever. And he's like, you need help with anything? Nope. I got it. Um, so, just be honest in all forms of communication. Um, kindness, Proverbs 10, 11, the mouth of, the, of a righteous man is a well of life. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Speak life into your spouse. Um, words hurt for a long time after they're said and you can't take them back. Um, be careful with your words and your tone. They, they kind of go together. And the last one is timing. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Proverbs twenty five eleven. Um, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Proverbs fifteen twenty three. The moment your spouse comes home from work is not the time to bring up that the dog was ran over, the washing machine work, and the mortgage company called. It's not. Um, so learn when the best time to have these conversations is. And it's not going to be the same for all conversations. Some conversations we can have laying in bed after our shower when the lights are off and we're laying there for the night. Um, some conversations we can't. Some conversations get my husband's brain going a thousand miles an hour and he's not going to sleep. Um, some conversations are going to get real deep real fast. And I'll ask him, do you want to have a big conversation right now? Something happened today. Can we talk about it? Or do you want to wait? Give him that option. Do you want to wait? And he'll remember. Tomorrow when he comes home from work, he's like, okay. What was the thing you wanted to talk about? Do I need to sit down? Do I need to eat? How big is it? Am I going to get mad? Do I need to yell at somebody? Yes, no, yes, no. And he's like, okay, what do you got? Um, be patient and let them be ready to have those conversations. We want to word vomit everything right now as soon as it happens because we are emotional. We are excited. We are bursting at the seams with either anger or joy or all the in-between. Um, they're not ready to process that. So be respectful of that. He will come back to you most of the time and say, hey, what was it? Um, but until then, try to just, you know, Simmer on low for a little bit and wait for him to answer. Remember, the simple illustration made a very big deal in my marriage. Women have spaghetti brains. Everything's connected. Men have waffles, okay? They compartmentalize one thing at a time. Open the box, close the box, next box, open, close, okay? Um, this is not an insult. It's an accurate illustration. So, knowing this truth, I tell my husband, um, I have something. I don't even know where I came up with it. But if I'm talking about Christmas shopping... And then I get a thought of, because when I was Christmas shopping, um, I saw this and I had lunch with your mom and then this and then this and then this. And mom said, Gurney's having a problem with her, you know, doctor appointment she's got to go to. Or mom said, you know, so-and-so called or she got a card in the mail or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I need to tell him this. I can't jump from Christmas shopping to Aunt Susie had a doctor appointment, okay? He's going to be like, what are you talking about? So I say... Okay, pause. You remember what I said about Christmas and I was shopping today? Okay, change gears a little bit. And he makes this funny little sound that lets me know he heard me and he's changing gears. We're going to close the Christmas shopping box. You've got something new to tell me. So-and-so had a doctor appointment today. So-and-so got a phone call. So-and-so got a letter in the mail. I saw this and thought, you know, do we need this? Did we talk about buying this? Um, just let him know, hey, 
new topic, change gears. And he's going to be like, what? I'm, I'm about to jump. I'm coming off Christmas shopping. I'm going to this. And he's going to go, okay, how did you get here? And he might want your train of thought. He's going to go, okay, I see what you did there. Okay, wait, what are we talking about again? Be respectful of that. Um, you know, we get confused because they don't always fall or frustrated because they don't always follow our conversations like we want them to. They're confused. And I don't mean that as like a derogatory insult. You know, our husbands are very intelligent. They're able to hold the conversation. Okay, don't think I'm trying to belittle anybody. But they don't see the thought process in your brain of how did we get from A to B. Because for us, it was just like, oh, yeah, we're having spaghetti for dinner. And, you know, I went Christmas shopping today and found a whatever. And he's like, we're talking about dinner. How did, why are we Christmas shopping? Where did you go? Um, so just say, hey, new topic, change gears, new box. And he's going to go, okay, we're going to close this. We're going to move over here. We're going to open this. Um, it's just going to help. It's going to be one of those things that it's silly, but it's very simple. And just try it. It's going to make a difference for your marriage. So I hope that you take these simple things, honesty, timing and kindness apply them to the way you speak to your spouse apply them to the conversations that you need to have stop avoiding conversations um bathe everything in prayer take that to the lord before you take it to your husband if there's something you're struggling with or something you think your husband's doing something your husband said that hurt you take it to the lord and ask him to help you with that um lord i want to talk to my husband about this that hurt my feelings how do i do this respectfully how do i do this kindly how do i do this with good timing um and let God work in these conversations, okay? Um, so use, use these tips from the Bible, timing, kindness, and honesty, and let God work in your conversation. So um, I hope this was a help. I hope this helps improve the communication of your marriage and gives you the courage to have those hard conversations. So until next time, stay in the Word, stay close to the shepherd, and let him lead you in paths of righteousness.